there are many additional apps included with Mac OS, and one of those is iMovie. So in this tutorial, I want to just quickly run through the workflow for using iMovie to edit a video. Many Final Cut Pro editors will use iMovie as a pre-editor, and you can actually upgrade the projects you create with iMovie to use them and work with them in Final Cut Pro. So when you open up iMovie for the first time, this is the default interface. At the top center, we see Media, Projects, and Theater. So this is the Projects tab, and you can hit the plus to create a new project, or you can go to the Media tab if you want to import some media. In our case, I am going to edit a project, so I'm just going to hit the Create New button to create a new project. We are creating a movie project. Trailer is a way to kind of edit a template-based trailer, like you would see a movie trailer. But for most Final Cut editors, if they're using iMovie, you're just going to create a movie. We then see pretty much the default interface for iMovie with our medias on the left side here in a browser, just like Final Cut, a viewer on the right, and the timeline at the bottom. So in this video, I actually have some gameplay footage from an iOS game called Fortnite, and we're going to just trim that clip. Very simple editing, nothing too complicated. So I need to import that clip. I'll click Import Media and it brings up the import window. Similar to Final Cut's media import window, but just simplified. So here's the clip on the desktop. I'll select it and say import. We now see that clip is in iMovie's My Movie Project Media here. I can hit the Projects button at the top left to go back to all of my projects, and this will actually let me name this project. So instead of My Movie, I'm just going to call it Fortnite. And now we're back to the Projects tab where we see that new project. Currently it's zero seconds, it's empty. So when you go back to iMovie, just double click on a project to open it. To use this clip, I could click and drag across part of a clip. We see the handles here and I can drag this around the portion that I want. Or I could just click to select all of the clip and drag it down to the project. We've now added this to the project timeline and I can scrub across it just like you can in Final Cut. And in the viewer, we see that gameplay footage. Pretty straightforward, not too complicated there. This video is of a couple different games. It's 13.1 minutes. I can use the little slider over here on the right to zoom in and out of the timeline. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit to make it easier to scrub across this video. Because I do wanna trim out the, video, the initial part if you've ever played Fortnite, you start out on this little island and then you get into this bus before you fly down. So I want to start right when I uh, go off of the map here to this part. So when I get there, I don't actually have to, to trim or cut it. I can just drag the edge over to that part right there, let go of it. And now we see the video starts with jumping out of the bus, which is how the game starts. Now I'm going to scrub through it to the end of this match here, which is right here. So that point, that's where I get eliminated. So right at that point, I can keep my cursor there. And I'm going to go up to the Modify menu and hit Split Clip. And that's similar to using the Blade tool in Final Cut Pro. It splits that clip. I can then select the second portion of the clip and hit the Delete button to delete that portion. So that's pretty much it for editing inside of the timeline. It's very straightforward. You can add clips, split them, you can also layer clips similar to Final Cut, where I could put one on top of another clip there. And you see whichever clips on the top is the one that's going to be viewed. But in this case, I just wanted to add that clip. I now want to add some text to the beginning and the end. So at the top of the browser here, we were looking at My Media, but we can now go to the Titles tab. And these are the titles that are built into iMovie. Similar to Final Cut, they have a, a couple choices you can select from. So uh, let's look at here. I'm going to scrub across it. I like this expand lower third. I'm going to click and drag that onto the beginning of this video. And then in the viewer, I'm going to go and edit the text. I'm just going to call it game one because this was our first match. And that's all I really want for the title. I could change the font and some of the other settings at the top here if I wanted to. But in this case, I'm OK with it. So I'm just going to hit the check to set that. And that looks pretty good. So, so far we've used the browser to navigate media and titles. You could also get backgrounds if you want to place some of those backgrounds behind the text or other media that you're using. And if you had multiple 
clips, you have transitions that you can drag in between clips. Again, all very similar to Final Cut Pro. You just see there are less transitions. There are less titles to choose from. You get more of that content when you upgrade to Final Cut Pro. If we wanted to, we can click on audio and we'll see the music and GarageBand, very similar to Final Cut. And if we wanted this music track, I can click and drag that down below the video to add that music track. In this case, I'm fine with the gameplay video. I don't want any music. So I'm going to select the music track and hit the delete key to remove that. The next thing I want to show is how you can customize video and, and use some of the effects that are built in iMovie. So with a clip selected at the top of the viewer, you're going to see a variety of buttons up here. The first one is an enhance button. You can just click on this button and it's going to look at the clip and apply the corrections or changes that it believes is the best for this clip. Again, this is just subjective, so you can go in and modify any of these. But notice after I click that, some of these icons turn blue. Any of the blue ones are the ones that have been modified and changed. So for example, this first one is the color balance that can be applied to a clip. And if we click on any one of these little buttons in the middle here, these are tools, we then see the options for that tool. So for color balance, it is using the auto option because we use the auto enhance button. But we could click on match color to match the color of a different clip. If I click somewhere else, it'll go and match that. I'm going to hit the X because I don't want to do that. And we can also uh, modify the white balance and skin tones. So these are all things you can do in Final Cut Pro, but they are simplified and you have access to them here in iMovie. So let's go quickly through the rest of these. The next one is color correction, which you can use these tools to color correct the video and make adjustments to it. Um, again, Final Cut's tools are much more uh, detailed than this, but you actually get some uh, saturation controls, some tints controls. You get some pretty useful controls here in iMovie. So you don't have to brush iMovie off. It's still a pretty good editor for uh, starting out. Our next option is cropping. And if you've cropped video in Final Cut, you have options to crop in, and you can even use the Ken Burns effect to zoom in and out of a video clip. Our, our case here, this one, we don't need to do that. We don't need any rotating. So I'm just going to hit reset to reset this crop parameter. Um, that's the other thing too. If you make changes in any of these parameters, say like the color correction here, I did make some adjustments I don't want. You can hit the reset button to reset that parameter. And notice it goes back to a, a white icon instead of blue, letting us know there's been no changes in this specific uh, correction. So that's cropping. Next, you get stabilization. So you can actually check this box to stabilize a shaky shot. You can modify the audio using this tab if your clip has audio, which this gameplay clip does have audio. And when we went and did the auto changes, it went through to try and enhance that audio. So you can use this to increase the volume maybe lower the volume of other clips and do some automation. So if someone was talking, you could check this box on the music and it would lower the music while that person's talking. Our next uh, step here, or next uh, little tab here is the reduce background noise. Uh, this is again, nice if you're working with audio, other ways to customize it. The first one's more volume based changes and this one is more correcting the way it sounds. So this is gameplay video, it's gonna sound Fine. There's not really any need to change uh, for background noise, but you might want to enhance it by bringing up the bass or maybe doing a voice enhancer or loudness. You have those options right in here. And then our next one is speed changes. So you can do fast motion and slow motion here or select custom and you can type in any speed you want uh, for the most part in there to speed up or slow down a clip. You can reverse it You can get those options there. I'm going to reset it. I don't need any of those. And then our uh, second to last one here is the filters. So you can apply both clip filters and audio filters. A little different with these ones. When you click on clip filters, you're going to get this pop-up window. I'll bring it over next to the video. And you can actually select any of these uh, little filters here. And you can see it's applying it pretty much in real time to the video on the right there. So um, a great way to see the filter and kind of preview it before you actually apply it. If I did want to apply one of these, let's say vintage, I'll click on that filter and notice it puts in vintage for the clip filter. Same thing with the audio. We get those options and I'm going to bring this over next to it. Audio you don't need next to the video, but if you want to customize the way the audio sounds, you can do that and you'll hear the preview as you hover over each of those. Uh, in our case, I don't need to do that, so I can just hit cancel and I'm actually going to hit reset here. Now, 
You can see a reset all button. There is a big difference here. Reset is resetting this these specific parameters on the one tab that you're on. So if I hit it reset, watch how this changes from blue to white. Just reset it, the filter that we applied there. Whereas reset all is gonna reset every single one of these tabs that we changed. So I do want the customizations it made for me and the auto uh, enhance. So I'm just gonna check that button. Uh, but the rest of them I didn't need, so I just hit reset all to clear all of those. Uh, just a few other tools that are included with iMovie. We do get a voiceover tool at the bottom left here. So you can click this to record a voiceover. If you wanted to narrate, say, the gameplay footage here, we could do that. We would just click back over towards the beginning of the project, hit the record voiceover button. It's going to give us a, an option here to count down and record that uh, voiceover. You see the little tools here in the middle. Um, if you need to customize this, you can. Just hit the uh, audio button here. You can choose what input is going to be used. Uh, and adjust that as you need. And then uh, let's go back to the back here, click so the playhead's over there, hit the record button. Very similar to Final Cut's voiceover tool, get a little countdown. And now we're recording the voiceover. Whatever we say now is being recorded. We see the volume down here at the bottom. So this is a really great way if you're someone who is recording gameplay footage and you want to do some narration, you can do it all right here in iMovie. You don't need to go into Final Cut to do those kind of things. You can do it right here. And then when you're done, just hit the stop button. It saves that. Notice here's our volume. Um, in this case, if we are using narration like this, maybe we want it over here. I could select that audio track, go up to the audio room. And notice it says lower volumes of other clips. I might take this down a little bit. Uh, actually, I want to take this up to lower it more. And notice the little audio waveform at the bottom of this clip then automatically drops down while the voiceover is happening. And then it comes back up at the end of it. And if I uncheck it, it was before and after, how much changing the volume of the gameplay footage while the voiceover is happening. So very easy automation here inside of iMovie. There's not really a reason to go to Final Cut if all you're doing is recording some gameplay footage and adding a voiceover to it. You can do it all right here in iMovie. And when you're uh, done with any of the tools, you'll hit the done button. But in this case, when we're done with the video, we're ready to share it. We can go up to the share menu at the top right. And this allows us to share it and export it. And similar to sharing in Final Cut, you do have a couple options. You'll get obviously way more in Final Cut, but you have the options here to share it to the iMovie theater. The This will share it essentially and save it in iMovie. You can get access to this then on an Apple TV and other apps with inside of the Mac OS. Uh, you could email it or send it to iTunes. But I find most people using gameplay stuff, they want to share it uh, onto social media whether that be through YouTube, Facebook, or Vimeo, you have those options here. Or you could just export the master file if you wanted to. So in this case, let's just take a look at YouTube. If we select YouTube, we're going to get the uh, name of the project, the description, the tags, everything that YouTube needs to be able to publish this video. You get those options here. If you've watched any of the videos on sharing from Final Cut, this is similar information, except Final Cut gives you way more selection and customization. Uh, you will need to sign in to your account, uh, your YouTube account, but just like uh, Final Cut, you can scrub across here and preview that video before you upload it. And we saw an option there to share to the iMovie theater. You can add it to the theater right here inside of uh, a share for another uh, option. Uh, when you hit next, it'll ask you where you want to go, get you all signed in and, and get that uploaded. So that's editing with iMovie, kind of a quick run through, very, very fast uh, way to do that. But the reason I want to show that is many people are using iMovie either on iOS or even on a Mac. Uh, they might use it to create a rough cut of a project, but then you want to use Final Cut to continue where you left off. So to move a project from iMovie to Final Cut, it's very simple, Sim uh, simple, it's very simple to go through. Uh, you just have to go up to the file menu and hit send movie to Final Cut Pro. When you do that, it'll go through and, and process everything. Notice all I did was hit send movie to Final Cut Pro. And it went through and automatically it's opening up uh, Final Cut. And what we see on the uh, left column here, we have our Six Flags trip project that we were working with before in library. But we now have a library for the uh, iMovie projects that we've created. So we see our iMovie library. I can click the little drop down here. We see the Fortnite uh, event that it created and the project for Fortnite. If I um, 
double click on the project for Fortnite. Uh, here it is in Final Cut. Again, very pretty much identical to what we saw inside of uh, iMovie there. We can see the title. There's a, the game one title I added. Here's the clip. We can see the voiceovers down at the bottom. Even the automation with it lowering down and coming back up has all been applied and is on this clip. So uh, we could then continue to edit just like you would any other video inside of Final Cut Pro and continue from there. So I uh, hope this gave you just kind of a little overview of what iMovie is capable of. And if you have any specific questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Uh, like this video if it's something that you enjoyed watching. And if there's something specific you want to see or maybe you don't want a public comment with your question, email any of that information to finalcutprohelp at me.com. Otherwise, subscribe and we'll be given another tip tomorrow. Thanks, everyone.